Hey, hey, welcome to the Business Beauty Network podcast, where business meets beauty. I'm your host, Brandi Taylor. Welcome, welcome. I'm super, super excited to have you here. We have an awesome episode in store for you. I've been in this industry for over 16 years, and it is my goal to bring thought-provoking conversations from business and beauty professionals to help us grow our business and expand our minds. And as I would say, it's not just lipstick, it's business. So we mixed in a little fun, and we drop episodes on Mondays, Wednesdays, and Fridays. You can also subscribe to the podcast on Apple, Google, Spotify, anywhere that you listen to your podcast as well. So make sure you check us out there and listen to it and subscribe there. Also click the bell in YouTube so that you don't miss an upload. You also want to make sure that you check out our podcast on our website at businessbeautynetwork.com. You can email us at hello at businessbeautynetwork.com. We are super excited to have you a part of this community. And here is today's episode. Hey, hey, welcome to the podcast, a new day, a new week, and a new episode of the Business Beauty Network podcast. Welcome, welcome. Make sure that you are subscribed to the Business Beauty Network podcast wherever you're listening. And don't forget to share it. Sharing is caring. So if you're enjoying this podcast, share it with somebody. Also, if you are listening to this podcast on Spotify or Apple, leave us a review. Let us know what you're thinking. We would love to hear from you with any episode suggestions or anything like that. You can email us at hello at businessbeautynetwork.com. You can check out the website at businessbeautynetwork.com. We are also on YouTube at Biz Beauty Network, so make sure you're connected with us everywhere. Now that all of that is out of the way, I have a great episode in store for you today. I had an awesome conversation with Kyler Ingram. He's a professional hairstylist who's been in the game for over 13 years, and he shared a lot of his knowledge about the industry and things that he he's learned to really grow his business and he's doing some awesome things and i think you'll really enjoy just learning um, some of the things he's done to grow his business and his insight on what it takes to grow a successful beauty business um, we talked about a variety of things and i think you're really going to enjoy this episode i feel that kyler is wise beyond his years and i felt more motivated when i got done talking with him so i feel like you'll feel motivated after listening to this podcast let me know what you think of this episode you could definitely review it you can also join a community at business beauty network we would love to connect with you and now that all of that is out of the way here is kyler's bio with 13 plus years of experience, Kyler Ingram shares his passion for all things glam and grooming at Law 22 Salon in Houston, Texas. From humble beginnings at Aveda Institute in North Florida Cosmetology, he is now a celebrated hair and makeup artist with his own thriving salon named one of the 2020 faces of Sola. Kyler carries a wealth of knowledge when it comes to owning and effectively managing a beauty business. I think you're really going to enjoy this episode, and here it goes. Hey, hey, welcome to the podcast. This is your host, Brandy Taylor. We have an awesome guest today, Kyler Ingram. Welcome, Kyler. Hey, hey. Hey, so I'm super excited to have you on the podcast. So before we learn more about you and all the awesome things you're doing in the industry, tell us something about yourself that most people would not know. Okay, that's a hard one, actually. Um, I think people don't know that I'm kind of an introvert or a homebody. I think they think that I'm social because of the industry that I'm in, but I'd much rather prefer sitting at home with my two dogs and, you know, being out and about, really. I don't know. I used to be a lot very energetic and always going here and there but I think because I put so much energy and effort into my career and work right now I just want to relax at home okay you don't you don't look like you would be a homebody you know I know I know most people don't they don't think that because <laughs> I'm definitely not you know I'm I'm a busy body my husband yeah how to sit down you know so. well see I, I mean I guess I would say I'm a busy body but when I'm not a busy body and instead of going out somewhere, I prefer to be at home, kind of just resting, gathering my mental, you know, that type of thing. I feel you. I feel you. 
Well, thanks for sharing that, Tyler. Yes, so how did you get into the beauty game? Like, you know, what attracted you to this industry? Well, um, honestly, for me, it was kind of trial and error. Um, I started barbering when I was 15, waiting on my dad to cut my hair because he cut hair like just on the side. It wasn't his career or anything. He just did that in the military. Um, And, you know, sometimes he would always be busy. So he would say tomorrow, I'll do it tomorrow. So one day I just got the clippers myself. I had something like a little teen dance or something I was going to. So I was like, you know what? I'm just going to grab these clippers. Um, I'm going to, you know, I'm going to do this myself. So anyway, I did it. It was, it was okay. And then he kind of boosted my head up and that kind of started me with barbering. Um, then I started cutting family's hair, friends hair. Uh, it kind of went from there. I went to college for music and I sang my, my whole life. The first part of my life, that's, that was all I knew, uh, music and, uh, voice instrumental. I went to college for voice and, um, I just kind of got uninspired with music just because the school that I went to, um, they didn't allow me to do the style of music that I wanted to do. The techniques and learning all that stuff, you know, being classically trained, I think is amazing. And I I appreciate uh, classical training, but I wanted to do more like soul R&B. And I just wasn't able to do that. I was really, really kept inside of a box. Uh, So I thought to myself, this is not how I, you know, want my life to be. Also as a music major, I think I was taking like 16 or 17 credit hours. So I didn't have a life. And I was like, mm-hmm. mm, I don't know about this. Um, so I had to think of what I could do because I had scholarships in music. So I was trying to think of what I could do that my parents wouldn't put their hands around my neck and strangle me. Um, because I'm saying here I am dropping all my scholarships. I have, you know, four of the siblings. Um, anyway, so I looked up stuff. I saw a Veda Institute. And I saw how like grand and everything it was when they um, were advertising for it. So I signed up and the next thing I knew, I was in cosmetology school. Wow. So you just saw advertisement Mm -hmm. (laughs) and decided, decided, let me just go to school. Mm -hmm. Because I knew, like I've always been a little more creative and I've always been the type of person that I knew I couldn't be sitting at a desk. Like that, that's never been me Um, or doing the same thing every single day because I, I get bored easily. Uh, most creatives are ADHD, ADD, uh, all other types of things. So I needed something that every day I was gonna be engaging with people because it's also mentally and physically, I don't want to say draining because I don't want it to sound negative, but um, you, you exert a lot of energy when you're in the beauty industry because there's so many different types of personalities. You know, Sometimes you have to be at 10, sometimes you gotta be at three. Mm-hmm. So uh, it kind of wears me out a little bit too being like a creative person um yeah (laughs) (laughs) yeah i definitely feel you there um so once you so you went to school you went to evade and everything now Mm -hmm. after after school how did you get your start like did you uh work under someone did you work at a salon like how did you start out okay well uh i guess i need to i should finish off what i was talking about first uh before i move on so it makes sense but so i went to evade um I ended up getting sick. My mom actually actually got hurt on the job. So I left school. I went back home uh, to help out with my mom. So I took like, I think a few months off before I came back. Um, I came back and then I actually got sick myself. So Aveda is very strict. So you can only miss three. At that time, you can only miss like three Saturdays a year. Mm -hmm. So I was on my third Saturday and it didn't matter if you had a doctor's note or not. Well, at the time, that's what I was told anyway. Um, so I ended up getting terminated from the school who I, you know, paid all my money to. I moved out of my parents' house. I was, I didn't even have an apartment. I was staying with my cousin at first, um, had some issues there. Uh, then I ended up kind of sleeping from couch to couch. So I, one day I was like, you know, I got to finish. This is something that I really feel passionate about. At first I was terrible at it. I'm not going to lie because I didn't want to, I didn't, I didn't break down like, how actually how things work, which is why I educate now, because I kind of like, you know, gearing towards people who might think like myself. Um, And then I ended up getting out of cosmetology school. I went to another school, North Florida Cosmetology. I always have to, you know, give them their props too. very family oriented, um, very nice. They want to see you win. It wasn't about the money. And I like the the energy about that. So I got done with there. Um, The next step was, okay, where am I going to work? So I didn't want to I didn't want to act like I was bougie or anything, but I knew 
what type like i've seen those big salons on tv with all the celebrities going in the salons and you know these big names are just big important people coming in so mm -hmm. i was like whatever salon i wherever i start at it has to make sense with where i'm trying to where i see myself you know in my career so i walked into ulta one day um spoke to the salon manager i came dressed up i think that's a huge thing as well you you know, the first thing people notice about you is how you look, regardless mm -hmm. of how shallow some of us may think. Uh, when you're when you are a beauty professional and you're telling someone, I want people to trust me with their hair, with their makeup, skin, whatever it be, eyelashes, you have to look the part. So I came in mm -hmm. there, you know, dressed the part. Um, I was scared to death, I'm not gonna lie. I felt confident because I had more schooling than most people because I did go to school like three times for cosmetology. Um so I did feel a little more confident there because I had more experience with different hair, but I was still nervous because I'm like, I'm about to be out here, you know, on my own, per se. Mm -hmm. uh, no educators to check my work or anything. So anyway, I saw Ulta had a great training program. Um, my manager, Cassandra Carmack, who's still in my life today. Um, she I don't know. I guess they just kind of saw something in me. Um, the only reason I left Ulta is because I, I didn't feel myself conforming to like a corporate kind of mindset when you're in a creative field. It kind of, mm -hmm. sometimes it can be a little hard. Like you can only wear certain colors and do this and do that. And I'm like, well, I just want to do hair and makeup. You know, that's all I right. want to do. Um, so I went to Ulta and that's where I got my start at. And I would definitely recommend for anyone when you are new, I know people see a lot of things on social media now. We did, Social media wasn't booming like that when I was coming up in the industry. Mm -hmm. um, but people see social media and they automatically think that they can come out of school and be like doing their own thing and wondering why they're struggling. It's because you don't have clientele, you need more experience, like real behind the chair or behind the brushes or you know behind the lash tools. Uh, you need real world experience with different types of skin, hair types, textures, everything. You also need a clientele to be able to support yourself, you know, if you want to do it on your own. Mm -hmm. So I feel like you should go somewhere and I hate to say it this way, but build your clientele up with the people that are walking in the door, you know, build relationships with them and they become your clients. And then you end up taking them elsewhere, wherever you go, they follow you. Mm -hmm. You know, it's interesting, Kyler, because you're the first person who I think have shared that, you know, you started off working at Alta, you know, mm -hmm. And I like that because um, I, you know, worked as a vendor in the industry for years with skincare brands and some cosmetic lines and some of the auditors. And, um, you know, as a makeup artist, esthetician myself coming up, like, you know, it's it's a struggle sometimes mm -hmm. you're trying to build and everything. So I had to vendor and do different things and have multiple streams of income. Absolutely. So, Cause you you know the struggling artist thing in the game. So especially when you're building, there's nothing wrong with going to an altar and everything mm -hmm. and learning customer service. You know, Ab you learn absolutely. That. You learn business. You learn how to benchmark. You learn those the things because you know a lot of us, a lot of people are talented, but talent can only take you but so far. Because mm -hmm. like now, for instance, I have my own business. If I didn't know how to run my business efficiently, then all my talent, it doesn't matter. I'm not I'm not going to be in here because I don't know how to run my business. I just know how to do hair or makeup or barber, you know, whatever it is. So working for Ulta, it gave me that foundation, that business foundation of, OK, so set a goal for yourself. Um, always, you know, push for better. You can improve on this. You can improve on that. Uh, over promise and or, or excuse me under promise and over deliver mm -hmm. basically you know meaning don't tell somebody something if you you're not completely sure you can get it but just be very open and be honest um so i learned i learned a lot about that in a lot of the places that i've worked i've always taken regardless of the experience there um i've always taken something from every experience whether it be a technical skill or whether it be like business knowledge yeah i think that's very important and um, and I, I could see how it could definitely shift and help you in your career because there's so many beauty professionals that struggle with, you know, the customer service, how to run a business mm -hmm. efficiently or, you know, even to have everything legit. Like um, like there's 
if you look up in any state, most states across the U.S., and you see what the average that a hairstylist makes, I think it's like twenty nine. It, it it yeah, that's what it says, which is <laughs> yeah. which is so sad, and honestly, it's not true. Right, it's but a lot true. of people aren't reporting. You know, a lot of people don't report their taxes, which is a whole other thing. Mm -hmm. And then you realize why you can't get anywhere or get business loans to grow to the next level. It's because you're you think that you're manipulating the system, but the system is actually navigating you. And then, mm -hmm. you know, it's keeping you under. So a proper licensing uh, permits, what what you know, whatever it is, you need to make sure that and if you really want to get to that next level and be legit and be respected in the industry, because there's a lot of big names. But if they go somewhere else, no one knows you or, you know, you're not respected. And it's kind of like if you do hair, like, say, years ago when I was considered consider myself a hairstylist or a barber and they say, oh, are you licensed? You're like, no. And then you can tell, like, the energy, the whole vibe is like, oh, OK. Mm -hmm. it, 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 and you can show them your whole page and everything, but they're like, oh, you're not licensed. Oh, I don't know about that. Right. So it's, it's just it's different. And but it's it's crazy today, too, because, again, you know, with social media, everyone also calls themselves a master this and a master that. And very honestly, I don't think we can ever master our craft, especially now that trends are changing, products change, ingredients change. I mm -hmm. will say that you can consider yourself to be more advanced. Um, but as far as just the master this and master that and blah, 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 I don't know. I think that's kind of going out the window now because typically a lot of people that use the term uh, master something, they really don't attend classes or anything anymore, you know. So it's kind of like you hit a you hit a stopping point when you consider yourself a master of your craft. I, I don't mm -hmm. know how to say it because it's not it, there's a way to do it and still be confident, but not be cocky about it, I guess. Uh -huh. So like like I consider myself like a salon slash beauty professional. I do a lot. I do hair, makeup, barbering, special effects, makeup. But you would never probably hear me saying, I don't know, I'm the grand poobah or something. I I feel like I'm I'm just like everyone else. I just have been doing it. I've possibly been doing it longer, or maybe I've just been doing it more. Mm -hmm. I feel you. I think you know, in life in general, we're evolving, and all, mm -hmm. and we should always be growing. And sometimes I find in this industry, people get stuck. I see it a lot of oh, times. Oh, yeah. Oh, people yeah. People just kind of get stuck. You know, like, uh, they're not growing. There's no growth. Mm -hmm. They're not learning new techniques. Mm -hmm. They're not, you know, expanding. They're not um, finding. They're like, you have multiple streams, I'm sure, because you do multiple things. Mm -hmm. But they don't have multiple streams. So everything is in one basket. And then um, and then there's no growth. So I so it could you could be a master to the point where it's like you know if you're you not, get burned out you get burned out yeah absolutely there's no inspiration growing, right if you're not continuously growing then you know you died you know mm -hmm. that's what happens if that's mm -hmm. what you created to grow so not not dying like in the, in the real sense oh no I know exactly off. what you your mean your business will die you'll yes, fall off and and you'll find your clients you know going to someone else because I get it all the time mm -hmm. I've been going to my stylist I absolutely love her I love what she's doing to my hair but she but I always ask for something different and I always come out looking the same mm -hmm. and it's sometimes it's not because your stylist doesn't want to do anything different it's that they might not know or understand how to do something different mm -hmm. Yeah, because they've been doing the same thing for so long. And mm -hmm. like, techniques change, trends change. There's so many, you know, different things. That's what I like about the beauty industry is that it's ever changing. Oh, yeah. And there's so many different things and you could tap into in so many different directions you can go in. Mm -hmm. So you you um said you do quite a few things. Like, so um, being that you do makeup and barbering and special effects and all those things, um. How have, like, what do you feel like um, in your business that you're known for? And how have you been able to really um, separate yourself from the rest in the industry? Well, I would say just by being my authentic self. Um, sometimes, you know, I'm kind of, I'm very quirky, goofy. And that a lot of times shows in my work. Um, I also, I like, I like, I'm about the details, you know, like an elevated experience. So from start to finish, even when I take the photos or videos, it's not necessarily a reason for it, but there's a purpose why I'm kind of posting what I post. Um, 
to your question your question was what was your question again <laughs> <laughs> no problem now how do you how do you stand out like because you you do a variety of different services so mm -hmm. how do you stand out and what do you find that people who come to you for the most in your business okay well I my biggest thing is enhancing that individual like personalizing something for that person in that moment um, not doing things that aren't realistic for an individual. Um, I also try my best to never cause any damages or, you know, jeopardize the integrity of someone's hair. As far as in my makeup, I do like to be a little more creative. Um, I like to be, I like to do a little more editorial versus like social media makeup. And that just basically means um, less, less like, I would say softer, foundations I like softer like highlighting contouring things like that and I will play up on the eyes and the lips and sometimes mm -hmm. the blushes too but um I feel like within my makeup I like to channel more so realistic well not realistic I don't want to say social media makeup isn't realistic but everyday woman elevated uh with my fashion colors I like to have creative freedom and do what if some people kind of plan and they have an entire map I'm going to do pink here blue here green here me, I'm a little bit of like a mad scientist when it comes to my colors. Um, I'm a rule breaker now that I have learned the rules over the past few years. Now I know how to break the rules efficiently and safely. Um, let's see, what else? What else would I say? And I think that's the most. I just give everything 110% because I'm always thinking of getting to the next level and I want to get to the next level in the correct and most legit and legal way. So I'm going to do whatever I need to do to make sure that my guest leaves happy, that the people that I surround myself with have a positive energy. Um, and that's what I'm also known for, I guess, is just kind of having a positive energy. Even if I'm having a bad day, I'm not going to push that on anybody else. You know, mm -hmm. um, I'm going to leave it at the door. When I get out of my car, I say, all right, here we go. It's showtime. Whatever is mm -hmm. wrong with me, I'm leaving it in the back because this is not the person that's coming to pay for a service. This is not their burdens to bear right um i think that's the biggest thing like a lot of times when people walk into my studio they always talk about the energy the vibe the music how inviting it feels and that's the biggest thing creating an overall elevated experience that's what separates me from uh others that's what i feel awesome so do you have a team no i don't have a team now well that's hard to say i mean I definitely have a team of some of my closest friends that anytime I'm doing weddings or um, parties, prom, video shoots, photo shoots, I definitely have individuals I go to. So I could, uh, we wouldn't be an official team, but I can definitely say that those are my go-tos because I know they're going to execute. They're going to give quality. They're going to come dressed, full faces of makeup. Um, and we're going to execute it and have a good time and make our money. I feel that. So what about marketing? Like, how have you been going about marketing yourself? Can you give us like, you know, three things you've done with your marketing strategy that has shifted the game in your business? Absolutely. So the first thing that I did, which a lot of people are like, no, no. But I think it was for me, it was gr amazing for me, was I put myself on Groupon. Now, realistically, I'm going to break this down because a lot of people don't know. When you put yourself on Groupon, you advertise at the full price. They advertise that at like 50%. Mm -hmm. And then you make 40% of that 50%. Okay. Mm -hmm. However, when you don't have any clients at all, something is better than nothing. As long as you're not doing a lot of services that are going to require you to have expenses like color or, you know, if you're an esthetician, uh, your skincare or your waxing tools, you know, things like that. Um, but you do an amazing job. You get amazing reviews. Groupon is such a huge platform that, I mean, I started being flooded with nothing but Groupon people to the point that I just cut it off after like, I think I was on Groupon for maybe five months. But every single client that I got on Groupon, every single one came back to me full price. So, wow. so, you know, wait a minute, Kyler, I got to stop you right there. Yes, ma'am. Because I've used group five before and mm -hmm. usually you find they're like deal seekers. Right. And mm -hmm. that's what people say. And I had like a couple, like I had a couple clients to stay, but for the most part, I got deal seekers. If I'm honest, 
And but I, I've I've known people that it worked for them. Mm-hmm. So I want you to tell me, like, I need the secret sauce, Kyler. How <laughs> did you get these people to return? Well, you know, honestly, I think for me living in Houston, it's a transplant city. So lots of people that I was getting on Groupon, they didn't have a normal person to do their hair. There there were a few hoppers, but those hoppers it's like they weren't getting a, a certain type of experience. It was just kind of like, oh, you're Groupon. Like I treated my Groupon clients just like they were full price clients. I didn't, you know, I didn't like skip out on anything or do that. I gave them the full on experience. So it's like, and then, and the whole time I'm talking about the next appointment, like when they sit down, I'm asking them, tell me about the journey you want to go on with your hair, you know, where you are now, where you're, where you're trying to be, you know, years later. So I'm making a roadmap with them. And then they're now comfortable with me because they've informed me on their concerns, their worries, their desires. And it opens them up, you know, to be more to feel more comfortable and being like, especially if you execute the end of the service. No one is also no Groupon client because, you know, some people let their Groupon clients leave wet. I don't let any client leave wet. You're going to be fully up, full on styled. Also, I can't especially if it's a haircut or something, I cannot detail the haircut unless it's dry so i see how it's moving where it's falling where it might need to be you know a little more texturizing happening at um it was really just i I feel like it was the experience and also i would let them know because a lot of times if they didn't have a, a straight on stylist they're using something terrible for their hair so i'm educating them on and and not even doing it in a salesy way just doing it in an authentic way well i i feel your hair is dry what do you tell me what are you using for shampoo and conditioner you're telling me your hair is frizzy and they tell me i don't know i'm using pantene pro v i'm like oh lord pantene pro v has wax salt sulfates everything that's terrible for your hair oh but it has keratin i'm like yes but let's pull it up now like i talk to my clients like they're my, they are my family or my friends mm. um I always, I don't know why I'm getting so passionate about that, but I do because I feel like people need to know the truth, but there's a way to do it without like doing it where it seems like I'm lying in my pockets because that's not the goal. Because the reason I'm in the industry, like is to change lives, but in a different way, even as an esthetician, you yourself change lives every day. People's confidence is boosted. Uh, They feel better. They're getting compliments. And every single one of those people, you know, I want to take a before and after picture when it's a group on and they feel super super special and i'm telling you every single one of them came back and not only did they come back but they brought their friends with them wow now how did you get them to bring their friends i need the tea well, I, you know it wasn't it wasn't me like it's just kind of mentioning or joking around um i also have like a mini bar in my studio so of course i can't sell it legally but i can provide beverages and i have a lot of uh different you know uh, different little things over here. So it's just oh, so really, it's, well, it's the client experience. So you're, Absolutely. You know, it's the client experience. Okay. Mm-hmm. So like from, that. I mean, from the moment they walk, I'm in a studio, so they have to walk through the main door. Now I am the first studio when you walk in our building, but I mean, I meet them at the door. I'm greeting them by name. I'm smiling. I'm going to make sure that I'm dressed to par. Um, I'm smelling nice. I mean, it's, it's literally, it, it's a whole it's a whole thing it's just a, a complete experience make sure my studio is smelling nice but it's not too overpowering it's a unisex fragrance you know i don't know like it's it's kind of like a a science to it but not so much a science if that even makes any sense at all um the yeah, other way i get, I get <laughs> it wholeheartedly i i get it it's a yeah i get it it's a, it's a thing. I mean, even really? like, you know, some some estheticians prefer to use a certain color wax because their room is a certain color. They want to create a certain vibe. I know some that do that. Yeah. Um, yeah. I, my, um, I love, you know, I love certain scents. I love. Mm, it. Yes. And then even like, I never understood beauty people that didn't do beauty like that. I just didn't get that. You know, I never Me either, because that, like, you're your own. You're your own advertisement. Mm hmm. Yeah. You know, oh, I'm a hairstylist and your hair is literally all over your head. Exactly. Right. Uh, no, 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 no. It doesn't con- it doesn't quite connect for me. Um, oh, but let me so I can stay on topic. The other thing that helped me with marketing is my booking software, Gloss Genius. Um, partnering, I found out about them when I ended up coming into so- the studio here at Sola and they partnered with Sola. So they have it, there's a part called Sola Genius. But anyway, it's called Gloss Genius. Um, they helped me with my website. 
I can post my reviews. I can do text marketing, email marketing. Um, I can filter, you know, if I say, I don't know, um, I have some clients that I haven't seen in five months, in the past five months, I can filter it for, you know, five months for certain services. So that allows me to get down to the nitty gritty and say, I want to do, I need more color clients. Cause I don't know, I need to make more money. Cause I don't know, maybe I have to pay for a car repair or something. Um, so I can target down to the wire, like to the, the, the T, um, who I need to, you know, send messages to, to kind of give them just a gentle reminder that, Hey, you know, I haven't seen you in five months, but, and I'm kind of silly. So it'd be like, Hey, I know those roots. Uh, those roots are all over the place. You know, something like that. Mm -hmm. Book your appointment today at Lawton. They usually send back a smiley face and laugh. They're like, Oh my gosh, you're so, you're so crazy. I actually, I do. Do you have anything in two weeks? And I'm like, sure. If you would head to my website, that's another thing that I try to do. I encourage online booking because in our industry, especially when you work for yourself um, or you handle your own booking, even if you're working in another salon, a traditional salon setting, a lot of times our clients, they don't mean to, but they forget that we have real lives. So you get messages all times of day, all times of night, on your off days. So if you encourage that online booking, it also builds a respect for the beauty professional. Um, I feel like over the past few years, because of how customer service has been, the respect for us has kind of went down a couple of notches. So, you know, it, it takes a lot more and the generation coming up, hopefully, to build that up. Cause like, I remember when I first started cosmetology school, uh, they were saying that there was no reason why hairstylists, makeup artists, estheticians, even body waxers, and now there are so many other things, uh, you know, services now, that there was no reason we couldn't be making the same thing that doctors make. And people are like, that's crazy. How are we supposed to do that? The national average is like you said earlier, mm -hmm. is 20 something K. Well, it's like, well, number one, those are the people who are actually reporting it, who typically work in, you know, the smaller places. Um, um, I won't, you know, name some of them because I don't want to make it seem like they're degrading. They're not. Uh, but who typically work in that, you know, the $16 or the $12 haircut place. Yeah, mm -hmm. you're probably going to make $27,000. Um, and those are the ones who are reporting it because their taxes are automatically being taken out. Right. But for the individuals who are, who are like, they say, what? They want me to pay $7,000, $5,000. I don't think I'm going to file this year. Or they say that they made a lot less because sometimes certain, certain things, especially like cash, can't be tracked. Um, so anyway, I, I, I think that that was definitely um, – something that helped. It was the the Groupon first, because that was the first thing that got me on. And then it was really utilize, utilizing my uh, my Gloss Genius platform. Yeah. Social media was cool. Social media was OK. Like, I, I can't say that it's not. But sometimes uh, social media, you get what you post. So if you're going to be using social media, you have to kind of be purposeful with social media, too. Like, and I say that to say, uh, when I first came in my studio, I was posting nothing but blonde clients or people that were extremely dark and I made them blonde or mm -hmm. fashion colors, bold fashion colors or something that's going to catch the eye. So from social media, that's what I started getting. Oh, I seen your pictures on there and that. Um, mm -hmm. But anyway, so I say that you just have to be purposeful with social media. Post all the services that you want to do. If you don't want to do a service or if you're not that good at a service, do not post it on your social media and then someone reach out to you and you say, oh, I'm sorry, but I don't do that. Because then, <laughs> oh, and people right. do that. People do that. People do yeah. that. I always say, you know, lead with what you want to attract. So like, if you want to attract more short haircuts, then post that. Absolutely. If you don't do short hair, don't be posting. Don't like, post short hair. Short hair. No, even if you have one client and you did a bomb job, and you, here you go posting, you're like, uh, like some styles would be like, uh, she's coming in. I hate doing pixie cuts. I'm like, well, so why are you doing a pixie cut? You know, like you're also right. in control of the clients that you have. And mm -hmm. if you're doing one pixie pixie cut client, you might do it really well, but you don't like doing it. Somebody's going to see it. Here you are, you know, starting to get these pixie cuts that you quote unquote hate. And again, that's when the burnout factor starts coming in because you're like, oh, here I am doing a whole bunch of stuff that I don't want to do. Right, right. And I and I'm glad you said that because I think a lot of time in the industry, we we feel like we have to, you know, get all the money. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. so we can't, you know, turn nothing down. But 
in order for you to be happy, if this is something I'm going to be doing every day, stop doing things that you don't love. Yes. To do. yes. Stop doing that stuff. Like yes. you don't have to do it. If you if that's not what you enjoy doing and you only got the one or two little clients, just go ahead and fire them. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know Absolutely. I mean? And see, and that's the other thing too, because you know, I, I don't say that I pick and choose my clients, but you can qualify your clients, whether yeah. they are going to fit with you or not. You know, just like um, one thing I had to learn to do is like, say, if I had a new a new client or a recommendation or referral from someone and they come in, we do the full consultation. I tell them the amount. Well, don't you think that's a little much? I'm like, no, it's I don't think I don't think so. Uh, or I don't even say I don't think so. Let me take that back. I'm like, well, you know, uh, it's levels of experience. It's certain products that come into use. And I totally understand if it is out of your budget. Whenever you're ready, I'm here for you. No pressure, no nothing. But one thing I'm not going to do anymore ever again, I promised myself that I would not allow someone to tell me what I'm worth. And I'm sitting here, you know, trying to make a deal with someone. Typically, those are also the guests that they're not going to be happy. It's still going to be something wrong. They're going to end up coming back and you're going to end up putting out more money on products and wasting your time that you could actually be using with your other clients that you spent with this individual. So typically, I just rule all that out. I, even for me, some clients even let their or some some professionals in the beauty industry let their clients bring their own products. And for some people, that works. For me, creating an experience, I'm going to use something on you that you cannot buy. Mm -hmm. You know, now you can get from me, but I want it to be an upscale experience. Like, you know, the smells and, and the experience, the lathering of the shampoo, all mm -hmm. of those things. Like, I feel like that is exclusive. And that is what why someone would come back to a certain person. You know, also when you sell retail, like I'm really big on retail because it builds a relationship. When when someone buys something from you, that is saying that they trust you. Now, before I move on, one thing I do, one thing that is really going on in the industry now is the whole having your client wash their hair before they come in. Right. This is uh, ridiculous. Yes, it's becoming like fast food. You know, it's and it's not it's becoming where it's not even really like service industry because it's like, what service are you really giving? Also, how can I guarantee that their scalp is going to be OK? That means like and the, the shampoo and, and conditioner for a hairstylist, that is the foundation of all of your work. Mm -hmm. So if I don't know what you're using, sometimes you might need a deep conditioner. Sometimes you might need to be just using something and you think you have dandruff, but it's a uh, wax buildup from products right. that you're using. I would I want to do all that for you. So you also have an experience that you cannot do yourself. But that go, that's another thing. Like you charge the same amount that everyone else charges that is given the full experience. But you're making someone come with their hair washed and already dry. washed and blow dry when most people don't even they don't even have blow dryers at, at their house. Realistically, right. especially in today's day and age. Right. Well, you know, when I wore my hair short before I was natural, I didn't um, have all the things because I want to get my hair done like every two weeks. If it exactly. Was regular life. And if I was doing something every week, OK, because mm -hmm. I mm -hmm. had to be right. So I didn't really curl my hair because I was back or wash it because I was back at my girl to do it, you know. So, yeah, I don't understand that at all. And then another thing I remember as a mother, you know, like my daughter um, just doing her hair. She did. Mm -hmm. She was why started washing her own hair, and she wasn't getting it all the way clean. You know exactly. <laughs> or you leave shampoo in there. You know, just yeah, stuff just like, anything. Like, so I know it's a, not just her that had that issue. I know it's adult women that don't mm -hmm. get their hair all the way clean. Mm -hmm. it could, they could be using the wrong products. It could be so many different things. So that should be that's a part of the experience because mm -hmm. I feel like the way a professional cleanses hair should be at least different from the way I'm going to do it myself. Oh, absolutely. Like, absolutely. You know? And that's another second to take it for your like when my guests are at my shampoo bowl, that's when I'm letting them relax. I turn the lights off, you know, while their conditioner sitting on with a hot towel or something It's making the scents go around everywhere. They're just there. They can relax with the music. Um, I don't know. It's just it's just a whole other experience. That's when I can really connect with my clients too. When I'm shampooing them, that is like, I mean, I don't want to say intimate, but that's that's like an intimate time with you and your guests. Is you know like an esthetician when you're cleansing someone's skin before you move on. That's the mm -hmm. time where you're just having a conversation or not. 
sometimes clients fall asleep at the shampoo bowl and i'm like i know that you really feel comfortable with me if you are able to fall asleep in here and you know i take it as a compliment even someone even someone i don't know allowing you to to touch their scalp or anything it's just a whole other it, it, i don't know that's just part of the experience i feel like and when yeah. you skip that experience now i'm only coming to you for literally a quick job i'm still paying the same price that i could go somewhere else exactly i absolutely agree with that like i've had that conversation so many times but it's just i think it's it's all in the experience it's a professional it's a part of the service mm -hmm. and so if you're concerned about cost you know charge the amount that's needed but you can't eliminate a major part of the service I feel exactly like we got to get back to that for sure so thanks mm -hmm. for sharing that so um so you talked about now I know you, you. We talked about the Groupon thing, and also Gloss Genius. Also, mm -hmm. um, I am a partner with Gloss Genius. So okay. If you're interested? Go ahead and click the link in the um, show notes for Gloss Genius, just to throw that in there. But I think those were all great things. You know, just having a way for people to book you, being mm -hmm. able to reach back out to the clients, and everything. Now, um, you said social media. I like. I like a way you talked about how you have to put out what you want to attract and mm -hmm. you, know, you really notice what you were putting out, you're attracting. Now is social media still a tool that you use to attract clients as well or a marketing tool for you? Oh, absolutely. I mean, because social media, again, if you use it purposeful, you know, with like your hashtags, like the area of Houston that I'm in, Houston Heights or Timber Grove Heights, um, then people in this area can see, you know, that your salon is in this area. So I definitely use it and I get clients from Instagram too. Um, again, just, I have to be purposeful. I can't put hairstylist international, you know, on a post and expect to get clients from it because <laughs> most likely it's going to be people that are hairstylists internationally. Right. Uh, so you just have to have to be, you have to have, know your target audience, uh, per your, per your post and your target audience can change. Uh, it's not always going to be the same thing. And again, for me, uh, sometimes I'm feeling like I want to do braids. I'm going to post my men's braids on my page. Uh, sometimes I'm like, oh, you know what? I want to start doing some more people's makeup. So I'll post a couple pictures of makeup. And like sometimes if you when you go on my page, like, I don't know, it's, it's not even really strategically. It's just now that I have a, like a process that I do, it kind of it, it makes sense. It's so many different things on my Instagram page. But you'll see like, OK, here's hair color, braids, hair color, braids, makeup inspirational posts, you know, kind of like that. Because I, I wh when I leave this earth, I know it's going to be so corny, but when I leave this earth, I don't want people to just be like, oh, he sure could do a head of hair or he could do a fade or do my makeup. I wanted to be like, you know, he really changed me. He gave me the confidence that that I, I didn't have or, or, you know, whatever, those things like that. People get in and like uh, one of my clients got in a car accident and I just cut her hair like short. And Instead of her feeling terrible about a scar on her face, the haircut, the short pixie that I gave her from her long hair, it covered up her scar perfectly. So the first thing she said when I called her partner to ask how she was doing was, my my uh, my uh, bangs cover my my scar, so I don't have to worry about it. Nobody can see it. And it was so small, but it was so big. You mm -hmm. know, like the people that they come in and they look in the mirror at themselves. I got rid of my full size mirror because people would sit there and look at their entire body and tear themselves apart. So I just got one that's like, uh, I don't know, I would say like elbows up so they can only see their face. And I have a like I have a sign by my station that uh, it's like a what is it? Song of Solomon. that says you are all together beautiful, my love, and there's no blemish in you. Just kind of letting people know you're here to like enhance yourself. I don't want you to think that what you are right now isn't good enough. I'm just here to kind of elevate you and boost you up. And I think that's what we all should do in the beauty industry, you know, across the, the entirety. I love that, Kyler. I love that. Thank you. Yeah, thanks for sharing that. So um, I think, so now, you, I know you've reached a certain level of success and there's a lot of different things. You know, I think uh, there's always an exception to the rule and there's no one way to do something, right? Mm -hmm. And, uh, but a lot of times people are like, you need to niche or, you know, you need to have a particular speaking yes. type of audience. And you just said something like, you know, you kind of like 
do do a great mix of things and you promote a great mix of things, right? Mm -hmm. And it's it's working for you and your business. Like, what can you say to that? Well, right? Yeah, I hear because now a lot of people ask me what I specialize in. I'm like, I don't specialize in anything. Um, I like personally, it's just myself. Some people like to specialize in everything, so they know what services they're doing that day. They only have a certain amount of supplies that they have to get. Um, but for me, you know, just for my, what's the word I'm even looking for? Like for my personal fulfillment as I consider myself just a creative, not even just a hairstylist. Um, I like doing, I just like doing everything. Uh, I feel like I also meet so many different people across different backgrounds and everything with the different services that I do. It's also put me in different arenas to have other opportunities outside of what I've been doing. You know, like when I started doing special effects makeup, I started doing people's makeup for Halloween. Then the next thing I know, I'm here I am invited to do an artist showcase doing body painting, which took me on to, you know, now I'm going to be going to Orlando to do another artist thing. So it's kind of just like, I want to have as many opportunities when, you know, when the good Lord, the universe, uh, whoever's out there is, when they on their way to come get me, I don't want to be a shoulda, coulda, woulda person. Like, I want to say that in my industry, I experienced as much as I could. I touched as many lives as I could in doing hair, doing makeup, barbering, um, guys, a haircut, Lord have mercy. It boosts confidence like nothing, even for, you know, even for men. They, Mm -hmm. oh, I'm not doing nothing. You cut their hair, they feeling all fresh. Now here they are, they ready to go out, you know, somewhere. But anyway. Um, I, I don't know. It's just, I just like to, to be different. I, I do. I just like to be different. I, I like to have my hands in a lot. It keeps my brain going too. You know, that ADHD, ADD thing, it, it keeps me like fulfilled and satisfied mentally. Yeah. And no, and I understand that, you know, and, um, just beating to the tune of your own drum, mm-hmm. but how does that like for, for your business financially, uh-huh. How are you able to, you know, bring that all in? Like doing well, school things? Like okay, so so how it goes, uh, I kind of have my week planned out. Typically, I'm booked in advance. So it gives me time to plan. Um, I also only use like certain color brands. Um, right now, I use che- LG Cheese Color Master, Cheat Farouk System just came out with uh, a color dispensing. Uh, it's It's not a machine, but it is a machine per se. Um, so that's what I use for my color. For my makeup, I have my certain go-to brands that I use for my makeup. Um, I keep certain basic things, style, uh, not style, stock. And I also, as with my hair color, like I make sure I have all the primary colors because I can use color theory and mix up whatever I need. Um, so I have like my things that I just keep on hand. Um, I really think that's, I mean, I think that's the best way. I know you're, you're pretty much asking like, how do I, how do I keep everything like fine tuned? Mm-hmm. Um, also though, so say with my like expenses, if I don't know if I, if I need to reorder something or anything, um, I use this online banking platform called found, uh, and I keep up with my expenses on there. So from there I can, uh, get my little, you know, what is it called? A spreadsheet. I'm sorry. I'm definitely, I'm not a corporate person at all. Um, So, you know, you have like your little spread digital spreadsheets and stuff. So I can say, okay, I ordered this two weeks ago. I order every two weeks. Um, So I know exactly what I need to order, what I'm out of, all that good stuff. I love that. So even though you do multiple things, you have a system and you have uh-huh. and tracking things, you know, what's going in and what's coming out and, mm-hmm. you know, what's what is costing you. Because I think that's the thing that a lot of people don't pay attention to is, you know, what it costs to you to operate and, Absolutely. and all those things. And they don't factor that in to even their rates and all of that. So and it's something that has to be learned, you know, or it's something that you always say you have to think about, too, because sometimes I come across uh, stylists that have been in the game a lot longer than I have. And they're always talking about they're not making money or whatever uh, the situations may be. And then you kind of have to dig in and kind of figure out why um, are you are you attending classes? What type of products are you using? Are you letting your clients bring stuff in? Like, how does that work? Because, again, if you're creating a one of a kind experience, then, of course, 
because you have an elevated experience, especially like it all happens with where your services are happening at too. Cause you have to think about the area that you're in for your price ranges. Um, uh, the, you also have to consider if you're in a more of a high end area, you're going to pay more for your space. Mm-hmm. Uh, it, it, it's just different. It's different logistics that I think people get very excited about the opportunity, but you have to kind of just take two steps back and think about it, step out of your creative shoes, step into like your business shoes. And if you don't know, Google, there's Google, there's business advisors, like we're in the age of technology and you should really utilize it to, you know, like find the information that you're trying to find. I am a Google fiend. If I don't know something, I'm going to Google or I'm gonna utilize my clients because I have clients in every single field so I'm going to utilize my clients and ask questions just like they ask me for me questions. I try to build relationships with them so we can have an exchange because that's how that's also how you win. I've gotten a lot of information about stuff and been able to elevate because of something that a client told me. Mm-hmm. I love that. So do you have any mentors or um, any no, I don't. No? I've never had any. No, I've never had any mentors, really. I mean, I came out here and I knew that. I grew up in a very small town. Um, I knew that I didn't want to stay there. I wanted to see the world because, again, I've watched too many, too much TV where people are in these huge cities and all these opportunities and people on the stage. And I was like, if I stay here, I'm not I'm never going to be able to do that. So I knew that I had to come out here and I had to do what I had to do. Um, when I first came to Houston, at one point I had like four jobs because I was waiting on my license to transfer. But I had to understand that, yes, it sucked at the time. But it is what it is. I got to do this because I came here with a goal. I'm not trying to go back home. So I have to I have to go out here and I have to get it. Um, And like I was asked once before, like, what would I say to someone that were like shy and that didn't like talking to people? And I said, well, I don't mean to be rude or mean at all, but you're not going to make it if you're trying to be an entrepreneur and you want to like keep to yourself because Mm -hmm. it's about it. Because a lot of times it's not even about what you know. In this day and age, it's about who you know. You could be the best, but you know no one, and you're like, you know, stuck back in the shadows. And that's how sometimes people secret. will say, yeah, and people will say that they're not even that good. I'm like, but you might feel that way, but they're putting themselves out there, and they've made themselves known, and everybody knows who they are. Mm-hmm. You've been in the game a long time, and you might be an expert, but you have not put yourself out there. You, you have no social media pages, nowhere, no portfolio anywhere, no pictures, so the first thing people do now is when you mention someone, they're going to be like, oh, what's their Instagram? I'm going to go on there. Mm-hmm. So you might not even be you don't have to be active on Instagram and have a million followers, but at least have like a public profile. And Instagram is just just happens to be one of the easiest ways if you don't have a website that has a gallery so that people can see your work or at least a Facebook page. Exactly. So because a lot of people like you can't be when you want to make it and, you know, from, you know, having a podcast, having your own businesses you have to go out here and you have to get it. And especially as a person of color, you have to go out here and you have to carry yourself a certain way um, so that you can really like shine. And unfortunately for everyone across all boards to perceive you in the way that you perceive yourself. Now, what would you tell yourself starting out? Like the person who like back then just starting out, what would you Mm -hmm. tell yourself after? Coming to where you are now in your career, what would you tell yourself? You know, I I did tell myself, brace yourself, because my journey started off rough. And I knew, again, that everything is not always going to go my way, but that if I could get past those obstacles, the way that I think of it is, okay, the next time it happens, I'm going to either I know now how I can avoid it, or the next time it happens, I know quickly, you know, like how I can go ahead and, and, and surpass whatever it is. Um, that's what I tell myself. Brace yourself. It's co- because it's, it's fun. It is fun. But, you know, a lot of times people also look at you on social media and stuff and they think that you possibly like live a lavish life um, or I don't know, or you're just like you have everything like everything is great and perfect in your life. Mm -hmm. But people also have to remember that on social media, let's be real here. We show people what we want people to see. If we want people to see our lives being dramatic and hectic, that's what we're going to show. Me, I want, again, I want to be inspirational. I don't want to add any negative energy to someone's life. So my things are typically captioned with 
a, a corny, some kind of corny caption or um, motivation or something inspirational. So when people see it, I don't know, it, it, it brings something like to your day, even for that that little point two milliseconds that you're, you know, seeing the post. And what keeps you motivated? Um, I think my I think my guests keep me motivated. Honestly, my guests, my family back home. I live here in Houston by myself. All my family um, lives in Florida. So I think just trying to like right now I'm working on building some generational wealth for my nieces and nephews. Uh, so that way, when they won't have to go through that journey that, you know, I went through or my siblings went through to be able to have some type of um, some type of a head start in life. Uh, I also want them to be financially literate so that uh, they know how to navigate the system and the things that because like when I was coming up, it was I was out here doing what I needed to do to survive. That meant working at Ulta, going home and having clients that I'm cutting at home as well. And over I mean, over time, stuff like things like that can actually help definitely cause the burnout because you're like, oh, my gosh, I never have time for myself. I never do anything. But then I just had to understand that what I was doing, I was doing for a purpose. Um, so what I did instead, instead of saying, oh, I'm so tired of this, I set a goal for myself. Like, I'm only going to do this for like six more months. Then I'm strictly going to be, you know, out of the salon. And six months is just a number I threw out there. But then I'm strictly going to be in my studio. I'm not going to be doing anything out of my studio, studio unless it's on-site work, like a wedding, video shoot, something like that. Or if I am leaving for a person, an individual at their home or on-site, then there's going to be an on-site fee because that's my time. That's my gas. I have to pack up my items. And I really started to, like, realize my worth more. Mm -hmm. What's the biggest lesson you've learned on your entrepreneurial journey thus far? Trust yourself. And you have to you really have to believe in yourself because there are some times um, you you might have a client and you think they love their hair and they might go home or or anything that you've done their lashes, you've done their makeup. Um, no, I take that back. Trust the process. That's the best words of advice that anyone ever told me. And that was what my manager also told me. Trust the process in everything. Nothing's going to, don't expect anything to come easy. We're not old. And you also have to remember that nothing changes if nothing changes. You can't expect anything to go differently if you're following the same actions, which is basically the definition of insanity. Right, right. So nothing, nothing changes if nothing changes. I love it. I love it. Well, Kyler, it's been awesome having you on the podcast today. Can you tell everybody how they can reach you and stay connected with you? Absolutely. So if you'd like to reach out to me or follow me or anything, I'm very friendly. I'm very cool. So feel free to reach out and actually send me a message if you want to chat. Um, you can find me on Instagram at Kyler Did It. That's C-U-Y-L-E-R-D-I-D-I-T. Kyler Did It. Nothing extra, just all letters. Um, if you want to add me, find me on Facebook, my name is Kyler Ingram II. My first name is C-U-Y-L-E-R. Um, yeah, those are the ways. Oh, and actually, it, can I say one more thing real quick? Sure. Okay, so I definitely want to talk about what's helped me with my finances. Uh, I'll take maybe two minutes. But um, I use an online banking platform called Found. And with Found, it allows me to itemize all of my things, send out my invoices for my on-site stuff, there's like a million different ways that your clients can pay. Um, they can use Venmo, uh, Zelle, a card, a bank draft, all of that good stuff. Um, but it just keeps everything in order because if you work for yourself, I don't need an accountant. I, a lot of people have an accountant. But because I'm using the banking software, which they always change it up, um, it really allows me to spend less time on worrying about how my money's being spent and itemizing and saving receipts and all that stuff and more time doing the things that I love. So I definitely wouldn't be where I am. I can't lie if I wasn't using found, which I've been using it for maybe like five years now. Awesome. Do you have a link? I'm not familiar with found. Found. Um, I can definitely get you a link if you'd yeah, like to post a link. A link. We'll have that in the show notes. Yep. We'll Absolutely. Have that in the show notes. Okay. Awesome. Awesome. Well, Kyler, that it has been great having you on. Um, do you want to, I know you love motivation. So leave us with something motivational before we go. Something motivational. Let's see. Well, I, my, my whole motto is nothing changes. If nothing changes, you can't expect for things to happen. If you're not putting in the work, uh, if you're not putting in the effort, 
I, and always remember too to don't be so hard on yourself because some of us are we're so hard on ourselves and we beat ourselves up but you know you you have to fall in love with you before you can share the love with everybody else awesome kyler ingram everybody and as always stay great and we're out bye thank you so much